So, doc, the number of sodium glucose carriers are limited. So, that is the reason whenever the plasma glucose concentration is more than 300 or 350 milligram per deciliter, the carriers are saturated and which is called tubular maximum for glucose. Then what is urea regulation? Urea is a passively transported substance. So, you must know three things which are primarily actively transported, which are secondarily passively transported that is co-transported or which are uh, passively transported. So, it is freely filterable. 50 percent of the filtered load is reabsorbed in proximal tubule and the distal tubule collecting ducts, these two things, they are classically impermeable to urea. And if you look at ADH, what is the effect of it on uh, the collecting duct? Typically, the distal tubule and collecting ducts may, the medullary collecting duct is not completely strict. If ADH is not there, it does not reabsorb. But if ADH is there, there is a permeability for the urea in the medullary collecting duct and that will increase the osmolarity of the medullary interstitium. Okay. Why this special property is given for the ADH? Medullary interstitium, agar osmolarity increases, what is the effect of that? It conserves water. Agree, doc? So, whenever we are dehydrated, when we need to conserve the water, ADH is produced. The produced ADH, one side will open aquaporin channels and try to make water reabsorb. At the same time, that will act on the medullary collecting duct and cause the urea reabsorption into the interstitium, increase the osmolarity of interstitium, which in turn is a driving force for the water reabsorption. Hence, ADH, what is the effect of it on urea? Normally, collecting duct is not permeable, but in presence of ADH, medullary collecting duct is permeable for the urea is what need to be remembered. So, about uh, 40 percent of the osmolarity in the medulla, it is because of this uh, urea. Now, how about phosphate? Most of it is reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule, but in the presence of the parathormone, it inhibits the phosphate reabsorption and lead to phosphaturia. And what is the importance of the phosphate? Why phosphate should be lost into urine? Phosphate binds with the H plus ion and forms uh, H2PO4, which is a wonderful way by which uh, H plus can be buffered and acid can be lost from the body. That is the purpose of the phosphate. How is calcium? In the proximal tubule and thick ascending limb of loop of Henle, they are the two locations where it is passively reabsorbed, not just in proximal tubule. Why it need to be remembered? If you use a loop diuretic like fusamide, it inhibits the calcium reabsorption in the ascending limb of loop of Henle. And uh, uh, that makes uh, calciuresis to happen if you are using loop diuretic. That is the reason if some guy is having uh, hypercalcemia. How do you treat him? Give him fluids and also prusamide. So that prusamide simply does not dehydrate him, hence fluids are needed. And uh, prusamide will inhibit the calcium reabsorption in the ascending limb of loop of Henle. So calcium is lost into urine. So calciuresis will occur because of the prusamide loop diuretic. How about Tizer diuretics? They reabsorb the calcium. So that is the reason where by acting on the distal tubule and collecting ducts, they basically increase calcium reabsorption in those two areas. And uh, anybody who have excess calcium in the urine and leading to calcium stones, you want to prevent hypercalcuria, 
we use the thysides. And uh, parathyroid hormone, what is the effect of it on calcium? It increases the calcium reabsorption in the distal tubule. It will make the calcium reabsorption to get hazened. Then how about magnesium regulation? Magnesium mainly is reabsorbed primarily in the proximal tubule and thick ascending limb of loop of Henle once more. You can take it granted, descending limb of loop of Henle has a very little role but for its capability of water permeability. Everything is ascending limb only will take care of our uh, life, right? Then uh, magnesium and calcium, they become complete, they basically compete for each other. Who want to get reabsorbed in thick ascending limb of loop of Henle? That's the reason can one dyslocalitemia lead to other? Yes. Whenever there is hypercalcemia, it inhibits the magnesium reabsorption and lead to magnesuria. Whenever hypermagnesemia is there, it inhibits the calcium reabsorption and promotes calciuria because both of them basically divalent cations compete at the level of the thick ascending limb of loop of Henle. Ultimately, what are the concentrating and diluting mechanisms which are available? So basically, what is the purpose of this uh, concentrating diluting mechanisms between the renal cortex and renal medulla? They want to generate an osmotic gradient. And the purpose of the countercurrent mechanism is basically to increase the osmolarity of the interstitial fluid and that will enable reabsorption of the water and permit a concentrated urine to form. And uh, what is the main principle of this countercurrent mechanism? Energy difference, energy difference, I mean basically the, it is a active process, ATP dependent, using the energy, create a difference in the ion levels between medullary interstitium and the tubular fluid because of the differing properties of the ascending and descending limbs of loop of Henle is the main basis for the development of this countercurrent mechanism. Then active reabsorption would occur in the thick ascending limb of loop of Henle without reabsorption of water is responsible for that interstitial osmotic gradient. So how is ascending limb basically? It has a low water permeability, low water permeability and uh, if there is, if the water can't move from the ascending limb into the interstitium, interstitial osmolarity will keep building because water is not coming, only electrolytes are coming and high water permeability of the descending limb, what is the effect of it? Typically, it enables the water to be conserved. Huh? So, uh, so this osmotic gradient in the medullary interstitium, which is sandwiched between the ascending and descending loops of limb of Henle, where the ascending limb is impermeable to water, descending limb is permeable to water, is the main driving force for making the water to not move from the ascending limb only electrolytes to move, which creates an osmotic gradient, which ultimately will lead to movement of the water into the descending limb and conservation of the water uh, into the, I mean, when the medullary interstitial osmolarity is very high, it will suck the water ultimately when the fluid is moving into the descending limb, so that ultimately from descending limb the water cannot enter into the collecting duct. It will be reabsorbed into the interstitium and then thrown into peritubular capillaries and retained by the body. You got my point? There is one ascending limb which ultimately become descending limb. So when the fluid is going to the ascending limb, uh, only electrolytes are reabsorbed into the interstitium and uh, fluid is not reabsorbed. Ultimately, when it comes into the descending limb, before it is about to leave the kidney, you don't want the water to leave. Ascending limb retained water, 
without leaving and built a osmotic gradient in the interstitium by permitting sodium potassium chloride channel to push electrolytes into the interstitium. When the fluid in the ascending limb enters into the descending limb and about to leave carrying all this water which is the bank robbery heist, then this interstitium is the police officer, it is ready now, it is fully rich in electrolytes which moved from ascending limb into it, right. That osmotic pressure in the medullary interstitium will suck all the water of the distal descending limb and make it thrown into peritubular capillaries so that it is retained into the body. So that is the whole story fundamentally. Ek haath se dekar, dusre haath se lena. Bole to counter current mechanism fundamentally. So who maintains this osmotic gradient in the interstitium? Number one, there is a passive counter current exchange where vasorecta are involved. That is the uh, peritubular capillaries of the medullary nephrons, vasorecta. The low fluid flow in the tubules give enough time and uh, the ADH in the collecting duct and uh, acts on the collecting duct and affect water and urea reabsorption. That is another important factor. They all basically maintain the osmotic gradient. So that is all the story of the counter current mechanisms.